Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harris and I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today we are talking about Volume 2, Chapter 8 of The Wandering Inn. Um, I read this like an hour ago, so if that's the wrong number, I apologise. The right number will be the, the title of the video. So this is, uh, as always, every Thursday I run through a chapter of The Wandering Inn. This is usually in the form of a full spoiler discussion. So um, let's go straight into things because most people who are watching this have watched this for forever. So I really enjoyed this week's chapter. I think that we got a couple of things that I really, really liked, which is the introduction of a new character that's obviously going to be important um, because Pirate Arbor spent so much time on her uh, and that character is Octavia. Um, and then the other thing that we got um, was the kind of world building that surrounded her as a character, introducing us to a new race or species, I guess. Anyway. So, yeah, first off, um, quite cool to see um, Ryoka actually get a few negatives from her running, talking about getting blisters. Um, interesting thing though, I guess, uh, this is me with my runner's knowledge, when you get a blister and you're a runner, you do just pop it. So um, you pop the blister, usually um, then like tape down the loose flapper skin or rip the loose flapper skin off completely um, seems weird because when you're not a runner you would not do that uh, but you can get blisters inside of blisters inside of blisters you can get blisters that fill with blood basically blisters and running don't mix as you kind of everyone kind of knows uh, I always like bringing my running knowledge to these videos because that's probably something that not I mean like how many people who are booktubers who are reviewing The Wandering In are also ultramarathon runners um, so I think the group I think the Venn diagram there is like just me in the middle um, and uh, so yeah I like to drop in some long distance running knowledge and fun stuff however I don't think that there is anything necessarily bad or wrong about this i think it's just fun to share my knowledge anyway so yeah ryoka uh, runs into town and she brings the frost sprites with her frost fairies winter sprites we're gonna say frost fairies i think so she brings the frost fairies with her and everyone in town is like oh for fuck's sake these fucking fairies which is very funny like i don't think anyone actually swears does it? they don't swear i don't think at the time but it's funny um and Ryoka basically is just pulling these fairies after her and everyone's like oh my god this is su this sucks and they don't realize it's Ryoka but like it's Ryoka um she then goes to the uh runner's guild she meets Fals and Garia it's great to see Garia I feel like it's been literally months and for me it probably has because this is like over a month now of reading volume two and she wasn't in the ending sequence for volume one so it's probably been multiple months since i saw her on page i don't care about false at all like i actually think he's quite rubbish um but garia lot of, i have a lot of time for um i think she's very funny and fun and also just kind of like a cool cute good character like basically Almost all of the things that I want in a supporting side character, Garia has got going on. She's one of my favourite side characters in The Wandering Inn, absolutely. Um, I probably didn't talk about her much in the spoiler chat with Lion, mostly because I hadn't seen her on page in months. Um, but if you'd asked me like midway through volume one, I'd have been like, oh yeah, best characters are like Torrin, Garia, Pisces, you know. So as as ever a big fan yeah so ryoka goes back to the runners guild and she has a conversation with files and garia about being a courier and she's like oh yeah i'm definitely going to be a courier and then garia and files are saying the thing that I, I think most people in the audience are probably also thinking which is like without leveling and skills you can't be fast enough or strong enough or endurant enough to um be a courier so uh you know it's it's tough 
but maybe Ryoka needs to get those skills to pay them bills. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how or where Ryoka goes with her character type. I feel like she's on the one hand, she's very stubborn and she would be like, no, I'm not going to gain skills. But then on the other hand, she also feels like the kind of person who does what needs to be done. Um, and so I wonder if we'll reach a point where she does go like, yeah, actually, I need skills. And she does already also know how to cast her light spell, um, which it's not really a skill, I guess. It's an interesting concept in terms of what she's doing, like is magic skills, um, I guess not almost like they're treated in the Trails video game series where you have like arts and then crafts. So arts are like magical spells and crafts are like personal attack skills. Um, so yeah, interesting to see that kind of line where she's able to learn a magic. I think that she also couldn't learn more or high level magic without leveling up in uh, or taking a magic class. I'm really interested to see where Ryoka's whole character arc goes with this because she's kind of not interacting at all with the main power system of the world. Um, so she's all, it's, it's almost like, so in a lot of get books and stuff, I really like seeing the non-powered perspective in a powered world. So like seeing the perspective of um, somebody in Mistborn, for example, like Steris, who has no... Um, no, not Steris. There's somebody in Mistborn who has no magical abilities and I really like seeing them, uh, their POV as a character. I think it's good. And then uh, we've also seen that, um, in fact, that's uh, one of the things I really like in Of Blood and Fire, the um, Of Blood and Fire, the Bound and the Broken, the uh, fantasy series by Ryan Carhill. Um, Wandering In fans, you would probably like The Bound and the Broken. It's my favourite fantasy series of all time. It's very approachable, very easy reading. Um, it isn't serialised, however, you do have to read individual books. Um, but in The Bound and the Broken, you have Dan, who has no magical abilities, and whenever you get his POV chapters, it's, it's quite fun. Um, I really enjoy seeing his character um, and seeing what's going on with him. And then the next thing I was going to say was so they have this conversation and they're talking about how Ryoka can't be a courier and Ryoka's talking about needing money and all this sort of stuff and she uh, she goes to the um, receptionist and is like I want to see the runners runners guild rule book I remember something from when I joined like an obscure rule and or uh, well, she says that in her narration and uh, this chapter by the way is fully Ryoka's POV and it's, you know, in the first person, which I do really like. I'd much prefer this kind of chapter where it's focused on a single POV than the chapters where the POV just kind of seems to slide around between characters, which we've had a lot of when Eren and Ryoko have been in the same room together. So it's like one paragraph will be Eren's POV and then the next paragraph without changing scene or without having a clear delineation will just be a different POV. And I don't like that at all, really. I'm much happier to have this more classic fantasy novel style of a single POV. Um, I also don't hate first person narratives. I read, you know, the Dresden Files, which is all first person. Um, and I have been reading the Sunny Eater series, which is first person. Um, I'm not anti first person at all. I do think I prefer third person, but first person is actually often easier for audiobook uh, for me. So if I'm reading an audiobook, I often find it more uh, more digestible if it's first person. Although this chapter I, I did read, uh, I got the old uh, got the old books tablet out and read it on that. It's an e-ink tablet that's got like all the apps and stuff and I read it on there and lovely time as always, love reading the ebooks. Um, I'll be very sad if I ever catch up to the point where there are no ebooks anymore, because I know that it's um, the release schedule's a bit wonky sometimes with the Wandering In, because I, I feel like there was like three Wandering In volumes released last year, but then like nothing for a year. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to 
uh, really more of the series, as I always say. So um, there's definitely something interesting going on with Ryoka and this rule from the Runners Guild. Um, I don't remember what this could be referring to, but it could be referring to something that was in the original volume one, not the rewrite, because obviously the volume two that I'm reading now was written based on the original volume one because the, the, the rewrite of volume one didn't happen until like 27, no, it started in 2017. The, the original rewrite of volume one happened much later. Um, so I don't know if you're watching this, let me know roughly when volume wise, the rewrite of volume one happened. Cause I'd like to know when I can consider the rewrite of volume one that I read to be the hundred percent canon. This is what's being referred to. So yeah, please in the comments, let me know. Um, then, uh, Ryoka is talking to Garia about like, oh, she's like, oh, I need to get, um, this potion analyzed and they go see Octavia. So the Octavia feels like the most important part of the chapter and she is a string person. So um, she is made of cloth and string and fabric. Um, and this is an extremely exciting kind of character for me. I really like um, characters like uh, golems and like droids in Star Wars and stuff like that, where you have these characters that are kind of built for, rather than birthed um i don't really know how it works with the string people yet but it does feel a lot like she was made um you know man-made and in a in a way that a person who's birthed is not um obviously please tell me if i'm wrong in the comments um or maybe you should not and let me wait until i get to where they tell you about it. So basically, she is uh, described in a few interesting ways. So first off, she's described as looking human uh, with very dark skin tone. And Ryoka's like, oh, I've not seen a black person around. Um, that's cool. Um, and I wonder if there's racial prejudice because there's not just races, there's species in this world. Um, and then she notices that there's some like string hanging off Octavia's arm. And then at one point when they're talking, Octavia's arm just gets knocked off and falls on the floor. Um, and uh, the arm is on the floor, there's string hanging out of it. And Ryoka's like, um, uh, and then Gary's like, oh, don't worry, she's a string person. Which is interesting, like, does Garia know that Ryoka's from our world? It's been so long since we've seen Garia. Um, I'm sure she doesn't know, um, but she might have a suspicion that there's something going on with Ryoka. I don't know whether in the world of the Wandering Inn you'd be like, oh, she's probably from another world, or you'd be like, was she, you know, a shut-in who's stayed in her house her whole life and has, you know, it was kept captive her whole life, or something like that. Because you might, because it's an inherently magical world, you might actually jump to the magical she's from another world rather than the mundane of wow was she kept in her dad's basement um and abused or whatever so interesting i wonder i'd like to know what's going through garia's head when ryoka clearly doesn't know about important stuff like she didn't know about the like uh port city um, first landing um, and like didn't know anything about it like how far away things were interesting to see uh, they were talking about distances as well in this one so that was kind of an important but like small nugget of a world law like world building law drop that the continents are insanely massive so they mentioned that first landing is like the northernmost city and it's 3,000 miles away but that um, Chelum isn't even like the midpoint in the continent, it's in the northern half. So we're looking at a continent that is, you know, at least seven or eight thousand miles long. And for reference, the US is like three and a half thousand miles wide. So if you think about something that is the US turned on its side and then over doubled. Um, so really interesting. And the thing that that was good about this was that it 
Ryoko talks about how excited she was about how unexplored that world was and that was the exact vibe that I got as a reader like my god this is so fucking cool there's so much world here to explore there's so many characters to meet there's so many races to meet there's so many cities to visit and I was instantly like yes I'm very happy about this so then we have all of this kind of new development going on and then on top of that one of the cool things that we've got as well is um string people and octavia so don't know where the string people are from whether they are from the hotter parts of the world as ryoka um speculates before she realizes that octavia is a string person i love the octavia's name by the way and i like like is she called that because she's the eighth child in her family or something like that, the eighth creation. Um, I always love um, number related names. Octavia is also just a generally cool name. Octavia Butler, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I like, I like Octavia a lot. She has a lot of potential for me character wise. Um, I like that she's like a slick salesperson. Um, there's lots of fun stuff going on with Octavia. Um, and I'm glad that she's very clearly important because we spent so much time with her and so much time uh, talking about her character as well as the thing that makes her interesting and magical, which is that she's a string person. Uh, what are string people, you might ask? Uh, you Probably not because you've read this if you're watching this video. String people are people made of fabric. Um, so she's... Uh, Ryoka talks about how she has fat, her arm feels like cotton and that she has inside her like fabric bones and fabric that is designed to look like sinew and muscle and veins with blood in them like super exciting and interesting and I really really want to know more about this character and about string people where they come from how they're made um don't spoil it for me uh don't tell me in the comments anything that i don't know yet um i uh, did actually get sent last week um by a viewer the um link to a wandering in wiki that you can set by how far you are in the series and that is genuinely like a massive game changer it'll be really helpful um so yeah really looking forward to diving into that one uh, when I make videos in the future. I did have a quick look today and I saw that Octavia actually was already in volume one. Um, so maybe that is uh, something that I'm going to go back and have a quick read through to see if I can see where she was referenced. Also, uh, this is not related to this chapter. So I'm really looking forward to... So we found out also that the chap the potion that Terry Arc gave Ryoka is like a pure, perfect potion and um, Octavia was like basically offering to give everything like her right arm to get it. Um, but Ryoka was like, no, I'm not interested. Um, so that scene will probably come back in a couple of weeks time. Um, and yeah, looking forward to seeing more Octavia, honestly. Um, but the one other thing that's happened today is that Daniel Green has dropped his Wandering In video. I have only watched about half of it, but I think the problem that he has is that he has read via audiobook the original version of volume one which pirate arbor and the community both acknowledge is, is not as good and has problems um and that were mostly fixed by the rewrite um when he m posted on twitter right so he, t he tweeted that he was reading volume one and he was like complaining about a few things that I was not, I was like, I don't remember seeing you talk about this, seeing this in the book. I was re replied to him, was like, hey, if you're using the audiobook, that's on version one of volume one, and it is a massively inferior version. You can read this, you read the new rewrite on the website now. Um, here's a link. And unfortunately, he obviously didn't see my tweet or didn't care. Um, and he in fact talks in the video about how he spoke directly to uh, the Wandering In team that works for Pirate Arbor about his video and it seems like he's kind of misunderstood a few things um, or not you know not asked the right questions and 
Obviously, it is not his responsibility to ask the right question. Actually, as a butcher, I think it is your responsibility to ask the right questions. But um, I think there's going to be a little bit of backlash from the community about his video. Um, I would just say, if you're a huge Wandering In fan, go into it knowing that he's quite negative about the series. Um, and it's an entertaining video because Daniel Green is entertaining. Um, yeah. I like Daniel. I watch a lot of his videos. Um, and uh, he did kind of... He was one of the first booktubers that I really found and enjoyed um, when he was talking about Sanderson stuff when I was reading all the Sanderson books. Um, but I don't. I think he's missed the mark on Wandering In, I have to say. Um, I'm going to finish watching the video now, uh, but I literally had to stop it because... Otherwise, this video would go up on time. So if you have been watching this video and you've liked it, please give it a like. If you'd like to talk to me about anything that happened in this chapter or just about the wandering in in general, please drop that down into the comments and I will chat with you there. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because every little subscription helps. Thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you tomorrow.